Hi guys, welcome to the Colour Cave. My name's Gem. I like to play with art stuff. The April Scrawler Challenge threw up quite an interesting set of materials, one of which was black paper and the others were mediums which showed up on black paper. That kind of piqued my interest and what I wanted to try and do was explore working with black paper a bit more. So for this new part of my channel, which I'm going to call Sketchy Sunday, a Sunday is a day that I like to kind of kick back and just draw for the sake of drawing most of the time, not necessarily trying to achieve anything in particular. However, the black paper thing has been playing on my mind quite a lot, so I decided I was going to have a first attempt at drawing something that was reasonably realistic and just basically to see how it's going to go. So I would like you to come and join me and we can learn together and see what comes out of the other end. So I'm just going to go and grab my pencils and we'll get going. There were a few things that I did in preparation before I started drawing. I first of all looked at about a gajillion, okay maybe that's a slight exaggeration, I did look at a lot of reference pictures and really what I was trying to do was establish the, the main areas where the, the reflection would be and what I found out very quickly was that it very much depended on how the object had been lit up. Several of the glassware objects that I looked at had several light sources, which just confused me even further. So I went with a, a sort of middle ground and picked the points where I wanted the reflection based on a few that were consistent and seemed to have them in roughly the same place. The second decision that I made before I started was what sort of pencil I was going to use because I had a few options. I did have some chalk pastel. I have plenty of white coloured pencils like the Prismacolor and the Polychromos but I also have some pastel pencils of which I have a white one as well. So I, I had to decide there what was going to be easiest for me and I felt that using the pastel pencil might be my best option because it would be a little bit more forgiving for making mistakes and things than the coloured pencil but not quite as messy as using actual pastel. So that's how I have arrived at where I am at just now. And I just thought I would bump up the the supplies that I had and get you know give myself an arsenal because I didn't know what was going to happen with this. So you can see there I have a blending stump. I have a kneaded eraser, which is good for lifting off pastel without damaging the tooth of your paper. And I also had a standard eraser as well. And I did jump between them quite a lot, as you can see as we go through. So really here I'm just started to try and put in the, the first highlight and with using a pastel pencil I realised that I was going to have to work methodically section by section just to try and avoid running the risk of smudging everything that I'd just done which you know that was always sort of in the back of my head so I tried to start at the right hand side obviously being left handed that makes sense for me if you are a right handed person you would try and go from the other side. After being absolutely sure that I had the proportions of the glass the way that I wanted them, which is one of the main things that I struggle with in drawing, um, it's certainly something that I try to improve on all the time and I'm quite paranoid about making sure those original contour lines are as good as I'm going to get them before I move on because really it's like the foundation of a house. If you don't have those original shapes and contour lines correct, it's it's going to impact on the final product of your drawing and if you don't have foundations in a house the house falls down so once I got to that stage you'll notice throughout the rest of the video that there are a lot of pauses and me sort of twiddling my pencil and really that's just the the process of looking at the the three or four reference pictures that I had up in front of me and being very very careful before I laid down any more of the pencil just to save myself having to rub out and potentially smudge out anything that I'd done that I was happy with and one of these 
drawings and in fact the same with any drawing really but if it's something that you've not drawn before you need to try and be as observant as possible make sure you look at your reference pictures or the subject if you have it in uh, you know in real life beside you and really take your time and deliberate before putting your lines down because it's easier to add in than to take away or try and fix something i know that's something i say all the time but it's so true um so yeah you can see where you, uh, clearly the little cogs are going round in my brain as i'm trying to figure out what i'm going to do next and how I'm going to do it. The thing that piqued my interest about doing a white on black drawing was this thought process that you have to reverse whereby normally when you're working on white paper and you're using a graphite pencil or anything else you are concentrating on working in the the dark areas of contrast and the shadow in the picture and when you're working on black paper with a white pencil you have to remind your brain constantly to do the inverse so you're drawing in highlights you're not drawing in shadows and it sounds really simple and straightforward but when you have been used to working a certain way for such a long time and then all of a sudden you're asking your brain and your hand to do the absolute opposite. It gets quite confusing sometimes and you think you're trundling along doing okay and you know your, your brain starts to wander a little bit and then all of a sudden you think to yourself oh, oh I'm not supposed to be doing this. So you on top of actually creating something that looks remotely like a wine glass in the back of my head I'm constantly reminding myself everything's back to front, everything's back to front, which, uh, I, you know, added a bit of an extra challenge, but I hate you guys know me, I'll just throw myself in, and as far as I'm concerned, if you don't try, you'll never know. By this point, I was starting to get into kind of the, the swing of what I was doing and I was starting to, you know, you can see that even my movements and everything are a bit looser, so I was settling into using the, the pastel pencil. I also decided to roll my sleeve up, which weirdly is something that I normally do anyway when I get started, um, when I'm drawing or anything like that, but I don't know why I didn't to begin with, but I realised that my cuff was catching the bottom of the picture and I was like, okay, so I need to roll that up and get it out of the way. Working on this little section here, I was getting on a little bit better and I was starting to settle into that mindset that I was talking about, you know, the, the inversion of the of the shadow and the contrast. Um, but when I was working on the, the front rim of the glass, the where the shadows and the, the highlights were going was a little bit more complicated because you had the, the addition of the reflection of the back part of the glass, which was cutting through that rim, you know, intersecting with it. So I did spend a bit more time sort of deliberating in these sections simply because I had to make sure that the front rim stood out that, so that you would know that the front rim was there, but also incorporate that reflection on the back side of the glass as well. Oh, it's all really confusing. <laughs> Having filled in two of the larger reflections at this point, I had my first bout of regret and um, that just relates to how hesitant I was with the pastel pencil. I realised quite quickly that with the type of paper, it wasn't going to take layers and layers of the, the pastel pencil. Um, so really I needed to be a bit more confident and go in quite heavily on the very first layer of pencil to get that nice crisp white 
reflection and you can see that I'm starting to go back over it and I'm trying to to make that as as vibrant as I possibly can. I think in future if I was going to draw uh, on black paper again I think I would go ahead and use some either uh, you know like a white Posca pen or a gel pen or even some white gouache to really crisp up and whiten the whitest parts. That's probably my main regret about this picture. Um, and yeah, you can see there, I'm doing it again. I'm going back over the, the, the reflection on the back of the glass and I'm just trying to kind of solidify it a little bit because when I looked at the reference pictures, they are very, very solid. You know, there's there's no texture or anything um, and it's just obviously because glass is a smooth surface. So that was the first lesson that I learned. And I'm only like a quarter of the way into the picture. Ah, it's just going great guns, isn't it? I felt as if I was gaining some momentum by the time I got down to the top of the stem of the glass. I was just a little bit more comfortable with the pastel pencil by this point and I felt a little bit more confident in my uh, the, the marks that I was putting down in the paper and also using the blending stump to soften them out because I had a better gauge of the pressure to use and how accurate I could be with it. So I've started to sort of speed up a little bit there and you can see again it's you know it's it's one of those things where naturally you're going to get a bit more confident as you go along and there we go I've gone back to that reflection again I just can't leave it alone um, I generally when I'm drawing I do tend to go back and forth between different parts of the picture I very rarely finish a, a piece section by section and that is really one of the main things that I was taught when I was learning to draw was that you should you should jump about your picture because you're working on it as a whole if you work on one tiny section at a time and then move on to the next and sort of compartmentalize it like that quite often you can end up with quite a disjointed picture so you're better to work back and forth but obviously working in the pastel pencil is just not that straightforward and just the sort of trying to avoid smudginess and things like that. And here's where I realised yep it happened I smudged the drawing. Thankfully it was quite easily fixed though so no great disasters there. At this point I looked at my drawing and uh, I, I was feeling quite sort of pleased and I was happy that, oh look, it looks like a wine glass, I'm getting somewhere. So that kind of helped bolster my confidence a little bit as well. And because one of the main things I was worried about was I'm going to draw this and it look, you know, it'll look like a kid's drawn a chalk outline on a blackboard. But I'm, I was quite, uh, quite pleased with the way things were going. But I had to remind myself to remain deliberate, take my time, because again, when I feel that things are going well, I have a tendency to get a little bit excited and then I start to rush and that's when I start to make mistakes. So at this point, I was telling myself to, you know, just put the anchors on a little bit and take my time and keep looking at the reference drawings and deliberate before putting any more marks on the paper. So I'm afraid that's one of my downfalls as a person. When I get excited about things, I just, I want to get it done to see what the finished item's going to look like because I get that excited. So I did try really hard here to, to hold my horses. I 
think I overcomplicated things for myself on this side with the reflections. The reflections on the right hand side of the glass suggest that there was two light sources. However, when I got over the other side, having looked at the couple of reference pictures that I had that, that had the same sort of reflections on them, on one side of the glass there's two white stripes and on the other side there was like four that overlapped. I'm assuming that is, um, you know, the, the, just the way the light's bouncing about inside the glass. So I was trying really hard here to make sure that I had the definition between all these different reflections and not end up with a sort of, you know, like a spaghetti junction type <laughs> situation. So I, I was I was quite um, confused, to be honest, but I did try my best to keep the definition there. That stroke that I've just put down, you can see how white that is compared to the, the one on the far right of the picture. And this is what I was saying earlier about having the confidence to put down quite a, a you know, quite a thick layer on that first attempt, because it seems to take to the paper better if you put some heavy pressure on it and again that's a direct result of how my confidence had grown from when I started to the point that I'm at now. I did find the blending stump really helpful in this section where I'm working on the, the four highlights on the left side of the glass. It helped me to differentiate between the, 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 the actual lines between the reflections and I could use that with a reasonable amount of accuracy which I was quite impressed with. The trick to that I found was making sure that the blending stump had quite a fine point on it. So I did sand it quite a lot in between uses to make sure that I had that nice crisp point in order to get some nice straight lines because one of the things about the reflections that I noticed straight away was that they are very crisp and at no point did they fade out. Um, there, were, there were very clear defined lines between the, the actual glass and the reflections against the other reflections as well. So the blending stump was definitely useful and I would most certainly be using it again. Now see, I've turned the paper around here and again, this is just to avoid the, the, the smudginess situation again as I worked on the bottom part of that glass. And this was actually my favourite part. Once again, I've just felt a little bit more confident and I was kind of starting to enjoy myself a little bit. You know, I was like, oh, this is actually quite fun. And really by the time I got to the stem of the glass, I felt as if I had found my stride properly. And that was the point where I started to enjoy myself and I, I became a bit freer and looser about where I was putting in the highlights and where I was blending them out a little bit as well. I did use a fair amount of artistic license when concentrating on this little bit at the bottom of the glass. The Depending on the style of the glass, I did notice that the highlights and where the, the chunk of the lightest part were varied greatly between even you know five six seven eight nine wine glasses and it just depends on the way that they've been made so I kind of took that opportunity to go oh let's just stick this in here and see what happens <laughs> so that was kind of fun too but I think it turned out okay I got the the the, the fundamentals of it right whereby there should be two thick white highlights um, where the, the, the bottom bowl part of the glass converges with the stem. So as long as I had that in, I think I could have pretty much done anything I wanted and it would still look okay. <laughs> I got down to the stem and I just went, wee, this is great. Oh, look, I'm going to put loads of stuff in here and just see what happens. There's not so much that can go wrong with a, a, a straight piece of glass, right? <laughs> but no, seriously, it, it was much easier at this point. The most complicated thing was definitely getting the reflections on the top of the glass. I found the bottom half much, much easier and 
I was quite happy that what I'd put down was what I wanted and that it looked reasonably realistic as well. So when I started on the base of the glass, what I wanted to try and do here was to match the highlights up with where they were sitting on the top part of the glass. So I knew that I definitely wanted to have one on the right and one on the left and figuring out how to work the rim, you know, that, that sort of outer edge of the, the base of the glass as well and trying to incorporate those highlights and shadows in so that they matched up with what I was actually going to put on the flat base part of the glass. So I kind of um, did a bit of toing and froing with this, trying to decide where these, you know, these highlights should go. And I found that just doing a couple of strokes at a time and then trying again so um, yeah, that's uh, that was really just a wee bit of thought involved, but I knew it wasn't going to have a huge impact on the picture as a whole. So I tried not to overthink it too much. And again, just be free with the pencil and play about a little bit and just try and enjoy it. I'm putting in those base reflections that I was talking about just a second ago and I knew that I was going to have to go back and you know work on them and work over them but I just wanted to get that sort of basic outline there to see if it was going to look right or whether it was going to look silly so um, I thought that that was a good idea and again I left it quite light there in retrospect I should have made those a bit heavier had I known that they were going to be in the right place because they should have been quite bright highlights. Again, similar to what should have happened at the top of the glass, but didn't really. But still, they seemed to work in okay and they didn't look out of place and they didn't look weird, which was my main concern. So the fact that we've got no weirdness and it still looks like a wine glass, then that means that I'm thinking to myself, yeah, okay, well, we can do this.
This was sort of a last ditch attempt to try and rescue these highlights on the top of the glass. The paper is actually still taking pastel at this point, which I was quite surprised about. But it, if you look closely, it is very patchy and I was trying to sort of smooth that out and make it as as um, even as possible which I think just due to the fact the number of times I've gone back over it wasn't really going to happen uh, and I'd resigned myself to it at this point and thought well okay well, you know that's that's what it is it is what it is and you know just lesson learned for next time so I was trying to sort of squish in this last highlight at the top of the rim which again is the reflection off the back of the glass and the same thing the same confusion sort of took me a minute to to figure out and it's where it intersects with the front edge of the the rim of the glass uh, it creates all sorts of strange reflections and you know um highlights where you wouldn't think there would be highlights and vice versa so I just tried my best to pick out from the, the reference pictures, again, the sort of best course of action, if you like. So, yeah, but I think it turned out OK. And I'm st I'm quite happy that the rim's quite defined as well, which was my main concern. So, um, yeah, I, I took that as a win. So I'm calling the sketch done at this point, but I just couldn't leave that highlight alone. I had to try again. Um, thanks for watching, guys. I hope that you've learned along with me today. And if you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up because we always like a thumbs up. I'm happy with the picture. So all that remains for me is to sign the bottom and say, I shall see you next time in the Colour Cave.